Corrine and recently I showed a gatefold album that I made and I received several requests asking me to show a tutorial on how to make an album similar to this and in case you've not seen it it opens side to side so it has several pages that alternate and I will show you today how I made that album I don't know if this is technically the correct way to make a gatefold album. I just had this idea and ran with it and I was really happy with how the album turned out. So I first just want to show you some of the items that I will be using to make this album. My The base of my album will be black and here is the cardstock that I use. It's Astro, by, Astro Brights by Nina. It is a 65 pound weight which is a perfect weight for a mini album for me. It's heavy enough to give a good sturdy base to the album but it's not so heavy that it cracks when you work with it. I get this from Albert, uh, Albertsons, that's my local grocery store. I get this from Walmart in the copy section where they sell copy paper. So I will be using that. I will be using scissors, double sided adhesive. You want to use a strong double sided adhesive. I'll be using Miracle Tape today. I have the one quarter inch and the one half inch. You don't need the half inch. One quarter inch will work as well. I will be using a ruler, a bone folder, my scoreboard. I like using my Tim Holtz paper piercer so I'll be using that. I always use a wet glue as well. I'm using Scotch Quick Dry. I will most likely be using my ATG. So basically whatever he adhesive you like, but as far as the um, putting the base of the album together, I would recommend a strong double sided adhesive. I have went ahead and distressed all the edges of my papers in black soot distressing. You will also need some sort of paper trimmer. And I did cut out some of the pages just to get a head start on this. I'm using the DCWV, the Primrose Stack. Actually, for the size album that we're using, any 6x6 six six paper pad will work perfect. So here are just some of the papers. I've already cut those out. Anything that I can do beforehand to help this tutorial go a little bit quicker, I will do. So let me set this aside and I'll be right back. Okay, so to go over what we need for the album itself, we're going to need some chipboard. I'm using some graphics medium weight chipboard. I get this from Amazon or Walmart. For our front and back cover, our back cover we're going to need a piece that is six and a quarter by six and a quarter. I've already added my adhesive. For our front cover, we also need a six and a quarter by six and a quarter piece that is cut in half. Therefore, it's three, eight, three and one eighths by six and a quarter two of those. For our spine pieces, we need two spine pieces that are three by six and a quarter. You're going to need four pieces of Tyvek that is five and seven eighths by one and a half. This is not necessary. I've made plenty of albums without using Tyvek and they do not fall apart. However, this does give it quite a bit more stability. This is going to go underneath the spine piece and the front and back cover where it's the book is kind constantly being open and closed. So this is helpful to have. These are those type of envelopes that you get packages in that you cannot tear them. Um, you send them through the post office and my sister is a secretary so I have her save me all her scraps. She just cuts off the address and then saves me whatever and I use all the scraps. But if you do not have, if you don't know of anybody who can get them for you in that way, you can purchase them from the office supply store. Again, this is not necessary. You can, if you don't have these, you can try something else. I've never tried anything else but maybe a thin canvas material would work. For our pockets, we need two pieces. If you're using 12 by 12 paper, you can figure it out differently. I always have a ton of 8.5 by 11 paper, that's why I do it the way I do it. So I, I use a front piece and a back piece, which makes my pocket. The front piece is going to be 7 and a quarter by 6. On the 7 and a quarter inch side, we're going to score it at 5 eighths on this side and 5 eighths on this side. We're going to need a back piece. When our pocket is done, it's going to be 6x6. Six six. So the back piece we need 6x6, six six, slightly smaller. So what I do is I put it in my paper trimmer at 6 and then just move it back slightly and cut it off. So I would say it's even, it's less than 1 8 inch that I make it smaller. I 
I've made all my pockets except two of them. Here is what it will look like when we're done. So one side will be for our hinge that will adhere to our book and the other side will be open for a pocket. So we'll make two of those on camera in just a moment. For our hinge piece, I'm using Kathy Orta's Hidden Hinge System and what you need to make this exact book is two hinges that are cut to five and seven eighths by eight and a half and I am going to have a one half inch gusset. We will do that on camera as well. So this is for our outside paper that we're going to wrap our chipboard around. You need two pieces cut to seven and a quarter by eleven. For the inside mat that's going to go inside our covers, you're going to need two pieces that are six and one eighth by eleven. I will go over all of these as we're working with it and I will also put these measurements on my blog. I will not have a full tutorial on my blog being that I'm taking the time to do this video tutorial to walk with it, walk you through it step by step. It'll just have the measurements on it so check out the description box for my blog post for that. And I do have a couple other pieces. These are optional um, to make flip outs for our pages. I have two cut to six and five eighths by six and one eighth. And most likely for these, I will be using a Spellbinders Borders die. You can use a hand punch die if this is something you choose to do come the time. I also have another piece that I used an, an edge punch on. This is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. I have a little scallop piece that's five and a quarter in diameter and then I added a half inch tab to it. I cut this from my silhouette along with this as well. This is five by four and three quarters and I added an edge die. Again, we will go over all of that as we're working. The last thing I'd like to share with you before we get started is I have a template that when you're adding your spine piece to your front and back cover, you need to leave a gap in between them so the book can open and close. You want to leave a minimum of two thicknesses of chipboard in between. Therefore, I made a template. I'm using the exact same chipboard that I have here. I glued two of them together and I also glued a third piece that is serial weight chipboard on the inside because I like a tiny bit larger gap. It just makes my book open and fold very nicely. So to reiterate, I have two pieces of chipboard with a serial box piece in between. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me set this stuff aside. I always start with my my um, pages and every time I make a mini album I tend to make different size albums just because I I like changing it up quite a bit. So the very first thing I always decide is what, what size I want my inside pages to be. So when I decided to do this gatefold tutorial, I decided I wanted my inside pages to be six and a quarter. And once you understand the concept of any mini album, you can adapt it to any size that you want. So for example, my inside pages are going to be six by six. My covers, the front and back, are always going to be a quarter inch larger. So my pages are six by six, my covers are going to be six and a quarter by six and a quarter. That way it fits inside nicely. So again, if you decide that you want your inside covers to be eight by eight, you're going to make your chipboard covers eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Again, once you get the concept, you can adapt it to any size you want. It's very simple. So for my page, let me pull out my stylus. I am scoring it on the seven and a quarter inch side at five, and five eighths of an inch on both the left and the right side. That is going to be the line right past the one half inch. And the reason I do five eighths of an inch is when you when you score one half inch, sometimes it doesn't want to fold nicely if you're using a little bit thicker cardstock. And if you go all the way up to one inch, you're just wasting tape. So to me, five eighths of an inch is perfect. So I'm just going to score it at five eighths, flip it all the way around and do the other side at five eighths. Next thing we want to do is miter the corners. We're going to cut from our score mark to the edge of our paper, just slightly taken off just a tiny bit and this will just help alleviate any bulk when we go to fold it. 
So let me see if I can show you how much I took off. Just slightly. So we're going to do that with all four corners. So here we have, this is the side that we scored down, so we have an indentation right there. And on the other side, we have this tiny bump. Hopefully you can pick that up. You want to fold into that bump. That'll give you a much nicer crease on your paper, and it will help alleviate cracking. If you're getting cracking with your paper, you might be using too thick of a paper. That's why I like to use the 65 pound weight. I find that it's perfect. It does not crack on me. So I'm just really scoring that down. I'm going to take, I'm gonna put a scrap piece of paper. I like to do that since I'm using hot glue. This is my six by six. It's just slightly smaller than six by six. And once, now that this is folded, this is six by six. So I want my back piece to be just slightly smaller. That way it doesn't hang over the edge at all. If it wasn't slightly smaller, it could hang over just slightly. And that gives, it, that does not look right. So what I like to do is just kind of line it up, move it around however you need to to get it perfect. Once you're happy with it, I kind of lay my arm down over it to hold it in place. And I'm using a little bit of wet glue and hot glue. The reason I'm using the wet glue is to put right in the corners. The hot glue dries so fast that you don't really have time to, to get it in the corners and then down the whole strip. So by getting the corners, I can make sure that's adhered down well, but yet I can still use the hot glue and it'll dry immediately for me. Let me make sure I might have slid this while I'm talking and showing you. Okay, so again, I'm holding that in place. I'm going to add my hot glue. You can use simply just wet adhesive if you would like. And just press that down. Really press on those corners where that wet glue is since it does not dry immediately. So unless you took the time to get the hot glue in the corners, which you would probably run out of time because it dries so quickly, then, um, or the other thing is if you don't put glue in the corners, it can catch when you're putting your mats inside and out. So that's why I like to use both. I like to use, like I said, the wet glue and the hot glue. If you're not comfortable with hot glue, you can use double-sided adhesive or just like I said, wet glue. It's just, it's just a little more time consuming. It takes a little bit longer to dry and I just like to kind of go fast. So here is my pocket. Let me do one more with you on camera. This is my back piece. I've already scored it. If you see any of the wet glue seep out, just kind of wipe it off. There you go. So there is another pocket. So for this, I've already made 12 pockets. Next thing I'd like to work on is our hinge. I'm using Kathy Orta's Hidden Hinge System. Someone recently asked me why in my other mini album tutorial I used Laura Dennison's and now she saw me use Kathy Orta's. And the reason for that is I like both actually. I don't like the wings on the Kathy Orta Hin and Hinge system simply because I know it adds strength, but simply because you can see it in your book when it's done. You can just slightly see it and that bothered me. So I just decided to alleviate the wings that are on the end and use it the same way that Laura stacked the deck system is used but with Kathy orders you really don't need to stop and think about it it's very simple to do and me I, I like one half inch gussets so there's no thinking in it it's just quick 
if you've not if you're not familiar with hidden hinge system you may want to stop by Kathy Orta's channel she has a great detailed tutorial on how to do it but I'm going to show you today on how I did it so for, again for this book you're going to need the hinge to be five and seven eighths by eight and a half and if you want a half inch gusset like I'm doing which the spine and everything is already accommodated for that then you're going to want to score every half inch so it's that simple score it one half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight. And if you if you saw me run my hand over it, if you run your hand over it first, then any oils you have on your hand will allow your stylus to glide just a little bit easier. And now I'm just going over them again since I am using a decently thick paper. It just will help it fold nicely. So again, we just scored every half inch. It's that simple. I'm going to erase my pencil marks real quick. Okay, so again, we want the bump side facing up. So here's all our bumps. We want that side facing up. Two, so the first two half inches are going to be our hinge that holds our paper on. This one I've completed. So these are going to be the hinges that the pockets sit in. So let me just show you real quick. Okay, so that's how it's going to sit. So we're going to have six hinges and we're doing two of them. We're going to have 12 total, but we're going to have six on each hinge. So the first two folds are going to be one hinge. Then the next one's going to be our gusset. That's going to be the middle of our book. The next two is going to be the next hinge, our gusset, our third hinge, gusset, so on and so forth. So you want to add your double-sided tape to the second part of the one-half inch. Okay, so we will be folding these two together, which will give us our hinge. We're going to leave the next one alone since it's our gusset. We'll fold the next two to make another hinge. We're going to leave the third one alone because it's our gusset, so on and so forth. So I'm adding tape to every second hinge. Okay, so there's my second hinge. The next one's my gusset. I'm leaving it alone. Then I'm counting up two, adding my tape. The next one is my gusset, so I'm leaving that alone. These two will be folding together. Leaving my gusset alone. And the last one will be a hinge as well. And now I really want to press this down with my bone folder, make sure that my tape is adhered down well. And now I'm going to fold these first two, crease it with my bone folder, remove my tape backing, and then fold it again. So now when I fold it back this way, you can see this is my very first hinge. Okay, so let me put it back this way. The next one I'm leaving alone because that's our gusset. I'm going to fold the next hinge over on itself, remove the tape backing, and then let me fold it back, score it down. I'm going to leave our gusset alone, fold these next two. It's very easy to see because we've already added our tape to it, so it's very easy to pick out which ones that we're folding and which one we're leaving alone. Press that down. And again, if you've never used her system, 
check out her channel, Kathy Orta's channel. She has a great detailed video showing how she makes hers. And she does make hers with wings on the end. Like I said, I just alleviated those and now to me it's a perfect hinge system for me. Because I just didn't like how the, the wings looked in the final mini album. You could see them between the front cover and the beginning of your book. Okay, so I'm doing the very last one, folding that over. And now if you fold it back, and now here is our hinge. So again, what I was saying earlier is once you know how the concept of an album works, you, you can adapt it to yours. I know that I like a one half inch gap, so this is easy to do, and you can do as many hinges as you want. If you want more than six, just leave your page to 11 inches long, do as many as you want, and then trim it afterwards. That's normally how I figure out the size of the hinge, um, is I just leave it at 11 inches and trim it down afterwards. But this is what allowed me to determine what size my spine needed to be because I made my hinges first knowing that I want a one half inch gap and then I measured it out and I saw that I wanted a, or I needed a three inch spine. So the next thing we want to do is being that our pages are going to sandwich on top of this we need to add adhesive to both sides of each flap. So let me just quickly go through and do that. I like to do all of one side first and then go back to the other side. And you don't want your tape to go all the way down towards the bottom. You don't want it interfering with that score mark at all. So just kind of put it somewhere towards the top, in the middle, somewhere in there. Just shoot for the middle and you'll be good. So as you can see, I got one side of each hinge. We need to go back and do the other side now. Okay, so now go back through and really press that down with your bowl and folder. Make sure your tape is really pressed down both directions. And you also want to do this with um, to break in those the fibers of that paper to really allow your pages to turn nicely. So I like to even take my brayer to it and really press it down both different directions. Really get that paper moving the way you want. Okay, and now on the back side we need to cover the entire back with adhesive. This is what's going to be holding it into our book, so do not be shy with the adhesive. And press that with your bone folder as well. Okay, so here's the back of our hinge, one more time, and the front of our hinge. And we have made two of them that hold six each. So let's set those aside. The next thing we're going to do is work on our covers of our mini album. So I'm using two pieces of paper cut to seven and a quarter by eleven. We may not need the full eleven inches but I will determine that afterwards. How I got my seven and a quarter is you always want your paper one inch larger than what your covers are. Unless you're using a very thick paper, you're going to want to go a little bit larger. But with this paper, I, I need it one inch larger. That's going to give me a half inch on the top and a half inch on the bottom to wrap around. So again, once you get the concept that you always need your wrap around to be larger, you can adapt that to whatever size album. So I'm going to overlap these two pages by one half inch. So I'm using my one half, half inch tape as a guide. I'll get that right to the edge, press that down, 
and now like I said I want to overlap these uh, using my tape as my guide so I'll just follow that line of tape to get it straight. Okay, press that down. Now we're going to start adhering our chipboard. We're going to start with our back cover piece and then our two spine pieces. And remember, if you're using Tyvek, not necessary, but if you are, you want to add the Tyvek in between where the book's going to open and close. So I'm going to want it in between my back cover and my spine. And I'm going to add, I'm going to take off the tape on the back first nails a lot of the time to be able to do that but it gives me like a paper cut underneath so I hate using my nail to do that so now I'm just going to I'm not worried too much about this I just want enough that my spine piece has enough to grab onto so I'm just going to place that under here for now do the same thing on this side not too worried about if it's perfectly straight or anything like that so now let me go ahead and remove the tape backing from this I'll be right back Okay, so all my tape backing's been removed, so this, all this has tape on it. I like to add a little glue to the center. I really want to make sure my book is adhered well together. And just kind of eyeball this. Um, I will give myself a guide. I like to give myself the one half inch guide. Not necessary, but if, if it does help me. So just remember we're going to have a half inch down here and a half inch up here. So here's my guide to help me get this where I want it and just center it best you can. Place that down and press it down. I'm also going to turn this over and use my brayer to make sure it's adhered, the glue is adhered down well. I find with the Scotch Quick Dry I don't get those big bubbles in it and it dries very quickly. So the next thing we want to do, our two spine pieces are going to sit like this, but keep in mind we want the Tyvek if you're using it on this side as well because our front cover piece will um, be on there as well. If you were using a larger album, making an, a larger album, then you most likely will need you know how I took two pieces of the seven and a quarter by 11 and overlap them? You most likely would need three pieces unless you were using 12 by 12 paper. So same thing, I'm just going to place this here. Here's where my guide comes in play. This will ensure that I have enough space so my front and back covers will work nicely. Press that down. And now I'm going to do my next fine piece, but I'm going to turn it this way because I work better on this side. I'll remove all my tape backing and I'll be right back. Okay, so I removed all my tape backing, added my wet glue, and now I will adhere this one down. And the same process for my two front covers, except I don't need the tie back on that side because we will be wrapping the chipboard around it.
Okay, so here is going to be our cover. If I could fold this over, I only like a half inch, so I'm going to cut a little off. If you had a bunch left over, if you were making a smaller album, just leave yourself about a one half inch to wrap around. Otherwise, you're just kind of wasting tape and extra bulk. So just give yourself about a half inch and trim the rest off. You can eyeball this. Next thing we're going to do is add adhesive around the entire edge of our cardstock. need to miter the corners. You do not want to cut all the way to your chipboard otherwise when you fold this you will have exposed chipboard. So cut and leave about a 1 8 inch next to your chipboard. So as you can see I did not cut all the way up to my chipboard and the reason I added my tape first is now I have tape that goes all the way to the edge so when I fold it. So do that to all four corners allowing a little to be left away from your chipboard. Now we want to start pressing our sides. Get that paper started the way we want to fold it. So do that on all four sides. Sorry, I know this can be a little out of camera view. Just really show that paper which way you want it to start bending. that when we, when we go to fold it will be a little bit easier. I'm going to remove all the tape backing and then I like to start with my long sides first. Just start in the middle and work your way down. Press that down in the middle. Just make sure it's nicely wrapped tight. Do that all the way down. Then take your bone folder and go over that to make sure that it's really pressed down. Okay, I'm going to do the long side on this side as well. Press it in the middle and work my way down. Using my bone folder. The next thing we want to do before we put push down these sides is tuck in the corners. We have kind of like a point, hopefully you can see that, right here. And if you fold it over, you're going to end up with a point on your album that we don't want. So we want to very gently with our bone folder, tuck that corner in and that will give us a nice edge. Do that to all four corners. I'm going to show you here how I tuck that in. And you do want to be gentle because you can rip your paper. So hopefully you can see that. Again, just use your bone folder and tuck that. And otherwise, you end up with that pointy edge on your finish. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm just going to press that over and really press that down with my bone folder. Do that on the other side. and press it with my bone folder. And now we have a great edge to our chipboard. Next thing is go ahead and take your bone folder and just kind of go around the edges, make sure it's creased nicely. So now we need our inside mat pieces. At this point I have them cut to 6 and an eighth by 11 because I wanted them just an eighth inch shorter than the height of my book. And I'm just going to decide at this point how much I want to cut off because I'm not going to let them overlap that much. I could because it's it falls in the middle of the album. If it fell somewhere around a crease you wouldn't want to do that but it's just going to use up extra tape so there's not it's not necessary to have all that extra so I'm going to just cut this down a little and see if I'm happy with it and 
and you don't have to put black in here. You can put pattern paper if you want. I like to do black, so um, where you have the creases, I have black and it all matches. I will be adding pattern paper to the top of this as well. I think I'll take a little bit off of this one as well. Again, I'm just doing that so it saves on tape. Okay, so this ends up being six and an eighth by about 10. I'm going to add my adhesive to the back of these and the chipboard and I'll be right back. Okay, so I, I've added my adhesive. I like to use the strong adhesive um, for the inside of this. And before I adhere these, I wanna point out, this is so important where the book, where the hinges are and where they open and close, you wanna make sure you have adhesive, especially there, because your page will bubble. This part will bubble when you're opening and closing if you don't have adhesive. As a matter of fact, I will be adding more adhesive in the middle, but I wanted to use the strong stuff right along the edges of where the back cover meets the spine meets the front piece. So let me remove all the backing and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've removed all the backing. I'm going to add some wet glue. This part will not be opening and closing, so wet glue is great for right there. You could use wet glue in the center. I'm gonna use my ATG. And again, this will help alleviate my paper from bubbling when opening and closing the album. I've had that happen before and I've actually ripped it off and redid it because I can't stand that. I think it just makes for a terrible unfinished looking album. So now I'm just going to use my side and line it up as best as I can. Take your time because you only really have one shot at this because there's so much adhesive. So just try to get it even. I'm going to turn this around and do this side as well. Perfect. And now I'm going to use my brayer, make sure that is adhered down very well. So I'm going to just really press that down. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is fold where our front cover meets our spine piece. Just start pushing it up to where you can see the crease and then very gently press with your bone folder. We wanted to go pressing in on that crease. And that's our front cover now. We want to do our spine piece. Same thing, really gently. If you used wet glue in, in the middle here instead of adhesive, then give that a little time to dry before you do this step. But I only used wet glue in the middle, so I decided to just go ahead and do that now. Same thing on the other side. Just kind of lightly do it, find that crease, and lightly press that. Now if we did not have tape on the inside of this, as we pushed it over, this whole piece would bubble and it looks terrible if that happened. So now I'm just very gently going to fold it the way I want. Just work with that very carefully. And now here is going to be our cover. The next thing I normally do is set this aside with something on it to kind of let it take its shape. So let me set something. set this on top of it and set that over. So the next thing we want to work with is our hinges and our pocket pages. I do want to go over this with you. Now would be the time to do this. These are going to make, if you want, inside flaps on your pages. If you've never made an album like this and you don't want to deal with this, then don't deal with it. It's not that big of a deal. But I like to do this now before adhering them onto my page and this will give us, so say we add our page like this, 
and we want to add a little flap to it. I'm going to add it before adhering it into my spine piece. That's what this little tab is for. It's going to glue on the inside here and then it can flip open for more spots for photos. So I have two pieces of paper that I'm going to definitely do that with. I'll set these aside for a moment. These are six and five eighths by six and one eighth. I'm going to score them This is on the 6 and 5 eighths. I'm going to go ahead and score it at 5 eighths of an inch. Same with this one, 5 eighths of an inch. Fold those over and give them a crease. Okay, so now these end up being six inches by six and one eighth. So it's actually a little too tall. I'm going to cut this down to six inches tall on both of these because I want them the exact same size as my page. So now this this piece, after it's folded, ends up being six by six, but it does have that little tab on it which we can um, glue onto our page. So let me just show you here. Here's our page, and we can glue this little flap into it. Let me miter the corners. I should have done that first. Go ahead and do that on both of them if you're doing two like I am. Okay, so now this will slide right in. And as you can see, we have a flap for our page. I am going to write on this because I've done this before where I've forgotten to add a magnet. I'm going to write magnet on it just so I don't forget come that time. And um, I'm going to take a border punch and punch a nice border on that. I'll be right back. I'm going to run this through my Sizzix Big Shot. I just quickly wanted to share with you that before running it through my Sizzix, I adhered my decorative paper on top, and I'm going to run that through the exact same time so I get the exact same cut for a border for this. So this is using the Borders One Spellbinders die. And now I, I added a little bit of ATG to hold it in place. So now that gives me a perfect border and I can trim off the excess here in a moment. If you do not want this look in your album, you can skip this part. But I like to add a little bit of um, interest to the album by adding a flip pocket here and there. I think I'm just going to use this as a guide and eyeball this one. Okay, so that gives me um, some mattings for these. I'm going to set the matte parts aside. I don't need to worry about those right now, but I do want to add these flip outs before adhering my pockets to my hinge. So I just got rid of that ATG. And now I am just simply going to add it to my pocket. Again, I'm doing that before um, 
putting it on my hinge. So I'm going to use some wet glue for this. Add it to my tab. You don't want to get too close to the squirmer because you don't want it seeping out. The good thing is it does dry clear in case it does seep out a little. So just slide that in. Make sure it's even on your page and you're happy with it. Press it all the way down and then really press it down. Here is some wet glue, so let me just wipe that off. It'll dry clear. And I have a reminder in here that I'm going to want a magnet placed before placing my decorative paper. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this one. Now the next thing is, again this is completely optional, um, I think I'm going to add a decorative one on the inside as well so it flips both ways. So this I cut from the Cameo, you can use a large scallop punch, you can use a circle. This is five and a quarter, I did add a half inch tab on the side. And I might add my magnet here, so I just want to write it because I have forgotten before, and then you have to get creative on how to fix that. Make sure I didn't get any glue seeping out so it doesn't shut my pocket together and I did not so I'm happy with that so now this one is done so when it's in our book it's going to flip open this way flip open this way and we're going to have decorative paper on the insides so this one's done let me let that start to dry and I'm going to do the exact same thing with this one this was cut to five by four and three quarters with a one half inch tab This gives your book a little more interest. You can do every page if you want to like this. I wanted to keep it fairly simple and not do too many for the tutorial, but I did want to add this part in in case you've never done one and you wanted to see how to do it. You can also, another way you can do it if you change your mind at the end and you want to add some, the flap that I had there, you could, if, if you already bound your book and you didn't have this opening anymore, then you could add it to right here and just cover it with pattern paper. So I didn't have to put it in here. If I wanted to use that tab, I could have glued that tab right to this side, and then when you add your pattern paper, you wouldn't see it. But I like to do it so you don't even have to cover it if you choose not to. Okay, so let me set those aside, and next we will work on adding the pages to our hinge. Okay, so we just simply want to slide them onto our hinge. I will remove one side of the tape backing. I'm leaving the release paper in place on this for right now. And I'm just simply going to slide my page in, make sure it's set the way you want. I'm going to slide it in. Now you don't want to go over that score line. You want to go up to that score line, get it exactly where you want. And then once you're happy, go ahead and press that down. Now we're going to flip it over, reach in there, and remove that tape backing, and press it down. Simple as that. So we're going to do the second one, and we're going to use this first one as our guide to try and keep our book as straight as possible. So I'm just lightly going to set it in there. And then I'm going to line it up with this one, watching where I'm at on the score line. I don't want to go over that score mark. And then press it down. Flip it over, remove the tape backing. OK, 
Okay, now my third one, I think I will go ahead and put one of these flip pockets that we made in. So I'm just doing it the same way, nothing is different. You're still going to have that opening like you do. Just make sure which side you want it on. Slip it in there. and press it down. So now we're going to have this little flip in our book. Okay, so we're just going to continue to do that to all of them. I'm going to do six on this side and then I'm going to do six on this side and I'm going to, since I have the flip that's going to be on the right side of my book, I'm going to put the other flip on this side of my book. So I will continue doing that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I completed adding all my pages. I did go ahead and mark which one I want for the right and side, the right and the left. Um, just because I wanted to make the flip po pockets that I added opposite from each other and I did not want them on the same page. So when you open the book this way, the one flip is on the third page and when you open it this way, the other flip is on the fifth page. That way they don't interfere with the, when we're opening and closing the book. So the next thing we want to do, at this point if you wanted to decorate add all your pattern paper. You can do that. I've done that plenty of times in an album. However, I made one album where I did um, pockets and pages and went and put it in my album and got it a little bit crooked. So I was, so it's just a little bit easier to see before having all the, the pages in there to add your booklet to your cover piece. But like I said, that's up to you on how you want to do it. Take a look at your album see which you want to be the um, top and bottom of your album. Doesn't really matter, but I like to look. And I'm going to leave it just like this. So I'm going to mark it. And go ahead and remember that this first flap is your cover of your book. The second one is your spine. So you want to add your booklet to your spine, giving yourself the same amount of gap on either side. So just kind of take a look, get an idea of where you think you're going to want your book. And what I'm going to do is remove one piece of the tape backing for now. Don't remove all of it. You can if you want. Again, I've done it like that plenty of times. It works out. But I think it's easier just to put one, gently set it down. This way you can lift it back up if you need to. And just really take your time on this and get it exactly where you want. Once you think you're happy with it, lightly press it down. So I'm pressing it down very lightly so now I can kind of really look at it and make sure I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm really happy there. So now I'm going to really press it down in the gusset and then go back and remove the rest of the tape backing. And if you wanted to do one piece at a time, press it down, another piece, press it down, by all means you can do that. I see that the tape came up a little here, so I'm going to go ahead and add some ATG. I really want to make sure that's adhered well. This is what's holding it onto your book. So now just kind of lift it up and press it down. And go ahead and press it down in the gusset of each page. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm only going to remove one piece right this moment. Okay, I think I'm happy where that's at, so I'm just going to lightly press it down so I can really 
look at it. I was happy with it and then I moved it. Okay, so let me just press that down. I'll still be able to lift it off if I'm not fully happy. Yep, I'm really happy with that. So go ahead and press that down, go back through and remove the rest of the tape backing. Press down on each one of these gussets. So now when we close our book, we're going to alternate each page. And here is our book. So at this point, the next thing I will do is most likely I will add my magnets just to give them a chance to dry and it keeps my pages closed while I'm working on it. I am using some magnets. I'll try and put a link down in the description box below that I got from Etsy and I use glossy accents to adhere them down. I'm actually going to add two sets of magnets because I really want this top piece to be magnetized down and if I put it on this it can kind of lift up because this can lift so I actually want the magnet to be on the base of the page it'll hold stronger but I'm going to have quite a bit of paper in between I'm going to have decorative paper here 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 and then on here so I'm actually going to put a magnet on this one as well I'm just for those I'm just using these little tiny basic gray magnets that I have I got these from um, Amazon. Again, they're just the basic gray magnets. They have a little sticky on them. Remove the sticky. I'm going to let them stick to each other and then adhere that down and then now I'm going to add a magnet to this one and this one and for that I'm going to use the much stronger magnets that I have I'm just going to add it to the inside flap I'm going to give that a moment to dry. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I like to do is use a little bit of ink and rub it right on that magnet. Try and get it on the magnet only, but I'll, I will be covering this up with paper so it doesn't really matter. And then close my book exactly how I want it to lay and press that down. That's going to leave me a mark on the other side of where I need to glue my magnet. So I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up on camera, but I have a perfect little mark there of ink. And just use a baby wipe to wipe this off your magnet. So now I know exactly where I need to glue this next magnet. I'll do the exact same process on that other flip page that we did. Hold it there for a moment while you give it a chance to dry. And I will give that a chance to dry and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other flip page. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've added the magnets to both. I'm going to place a pa piece of paper in between. Just, um, these are really strong mag magnets, just to let this sit and dry. Otherwise, it could tear it off the paper, and I don't want to do that. Um, it'll give it a chance to dry. And now I am just going to let my book sit overnight and work on it tomorrow. So I'm alternating each page as I'm closing. 
I am going to set something heavy on this book because it wants to flip open. I'm going to set something heavy on it and let it sit overnight. I also wanted to add that the mat for all your pages are going to be five and three quarters by five and a half. I did a decorative edge on mine. You can do some sort of tab punch if you have a tab. Um, you don't have to put anything you want, but if you wanted to put something like this on the end, whatever you, you want is up to you. But again, five and three quarters by five and a half, and they will slip in the pocket. You do not want them sticking out too much. I have mine sticking out just slightly, so the person using this album will know for a pull-out mat. Okay, so I want to work on pockets now for our book. I have some black cardstock, the exact same black cardstock that I used for the base of the album, and we want the final pocket to end up being the same size as our pages. Well, our pages are six by six. So if you remember, I had stated in the beginning, I like to do a 5 8 inch flap. You can do a half inch if you'd like, but I'm going to do a 5 8 inch flap on both the left side and the right side and the bottom as well. So I have a piece of paper here. I'll cut that down. My pages are 6 inches. So if I add 5 8 plus another 5 8, that gives me 7 and a quarter. And just a reminder, I will have all these measurements on my blog. So I'm going to cut this to 7 and a quarter. If you only want to do a half inch on either side, you can cut yours to seven inches. So seven and a quarter, and I think I'm going to do this pocket to, let's do three and a half, plus another five eighths. So that's four and an eighth. So seven and a quarter by four and an eighth. So I have two other pieces of paper here that I'm going to make pockets out. One of them I'm going to set aside. The other one, let me see how. I'm going to cut to seven and a quarter, and this one happens to be seven and a quarter. And I'm going to cut it to, or I want my final pocket to be three inches. So I'm actually going to cut it to three and five eighths. That's going to be the line, right? the larger line right after three and a half. I can set my paper trimmer aside, pull out my scoreboard. And we want to score these the exact same on both. We want 5 eighths of an inch tab on this side, this side, and one of the bottom sides as well. So I'm going to score it at 5 eighths, turn it to one of the long sides, score it at 5 eighths, and then go to the opposite side that you scored here on the short side and score it at 5 eighths. I'm going to do the same thing on this pocket, 5 eighths, turn it once, 5 eighths, turn it again to the other side, 5 eighths. So now the next thing we want to do is get rid of these corner pieces. So we want to get rid of this piece and this piece. And we also want to miter it, so I'm going to cut straight across this score mark where they meet in the middle. And then just as we did to the pockets, I'm going to take a tiny bit off this part as well. It's just going to alleviate some bulk when we fold our pocket. So I'm going to cut straight where that score line meets and cut that off. I'll do the same to the other side, and I'm going to miter the corners on the top. Okay, we're going to do the same to this one, however, before I do that, this one I'm going to use a scallop edge punch, and obviously you want to punch the, the opposite end of where you put your long score mark, because this is going to be the top of our pocket. I'm using a Fiskars, I believe it's called uh, Treading Water, I'm not positive of that, I've had this a really long time, I love this punch. So 
So that gives, gives me a great scallop edge. Okay, so back to this, we want to, like I said, do the same thing. Cut along that bottom edge. And we still want to miter these corners as well. So here's what we have. Let me turn it this way, you might be able to see it a little better. So now you have the option if if you don't want to do all that and you just want to take a piece of paper that's going to be the same size as your pocket, which in this case is six inches, if you want to cut a piece of paper to six inches and just glue down three sides, you can do that. You can alleviate having to make tabs at all. However, by doing that, you're going to limit your space that you have in your pocket. You're not going to have as much space as if you use tabs. So if it's easier for you just to do it like this, then just go ahead and glue down your pocket to whatever height you want by the width of whatever your book is. I like doing the tabs most times, not all the time, but I like doing the tabs most times because it gives you more room in your pocket for photos or journaling cards. So go ahead and fold on your score lines. Remember to fold into the bumps. And we are going to add our pattern paper before adding our pockets. When you have tabs like this, you can actually add this onto your page and easily slip your designer paper or pattern paper into it and it would work fine. So we could technically glue our pockets on right now, but I'm going to do that when I um, decorate or add the, after I add the pattern paper to my book. So now the next thing you would want to do is just measure this out. Leave yourself an eighth or a quarter inch um, smaller and add a mat piece if you'd like to this. So for this one I'm going to add two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And by writing this down it believes it just helps me a little bit um, I don't have to, I can just cut it out then. So same same thing on this side, two and three quarters by five and three quarters. Okay, and also I wanna show you that I did make two of these because I love this bracket edge so much, but I don't have a punch that does this. So I designed these in my Cameo to do this. So however you want, you can do straight pockets like I have one here. I love the straight pockets as well, but this is my favorite edge. So I just added my tabs on it and cut it out from my Cameo. And I do actually have a video that shows how to do that. I'll try to remember to link that in the description box, but you can find it on my channel under the playlist uh, Silhouette Basics and it's called How to Add Bracket Pockets to Your Mini Albums. So that'll give you a step-by-step. -step. The last thing I wanna show you is um, a diagonal pocket. I almost always add a diagonal pocket to my mini albums. And if you don't wanna add any pockets, you don't have to. So for the diagonal pockets, I'm not gonna do tabs on the end. Being that I'm not doing tabs on the end, I wanna cut my piece of paper to six inches. I'm not gonna worry about the height just yet. So you want to make it the same size as your mini album page and now simply mark it with your pencil. You can do a diagonal that goes from wherever you want all the way to this corner of your paper. I don't like to do that. I like to leave a little bit higher for stability. So you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. So I'm just going to simply eyeball this. I'm going to add a pencil mark here and here. And now using my paper trimmer, I will connect those lines and cut that out. I kind of have my paper trimmer at a weird angle. Let me set this aside. Let me set a piece of paper behind it, it might be a little easier to see. And when I'm working on all black and I'm going to add, say, my pattern paper to it, I do always set a white piece of paper behind it. It helps um, the pocket stand out so it's easier to work with. That's just a little tip that hopefully helps. So now you can see I have a diagonal pocket. 
and I like my diagonal pockets to come up. I don't want them to go all the way to the edge, but it's all in what you choose to do. Now you would simply cut a pattern piece of paper that is six inches wide. This is not six inches wide, but you would cut it to six inches wide, wide, lay your diagonal piece of paper over it, trace it, and then just cut it inside the trace lines. That'll give you a perfect mat for your pocket. At this point, I will go ahead and finish off my book. I'm going to put it in fast play since um, it's just adding my papers. I'm going to keep this album very simple. I most likely will not add any embellishments to the pages. Being that this paper is very busy and I love the paper, I want to just let it speak for itself. So I, I probably will only add embellishments to the cover. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I so appreciate you following along.